Welcome to episode 16 of the Chalk Dinosaur Podcast. I'm your host, John O'Halloran, and today I spoke with Katie Altmans, who's a radio DJ for a couple stations in Pittsburgh and around the country, and we also talk about her podcast, which is called Seen Unheard. She started that a couple years ago, which is how I came into contact with her. John Henderson, our guitar player and my friend, he was in a band called The Buckle Downs, and they were on the first season of her podcast. She splits it up into seasons, 10 to 15 episodes a season. And uh, Chalk Dinosaur was on the second season. Uh, Katie is also the marketing director for The Thunderbird and The Roxy and Theater. We were not able to go into a lot of detail about that, um, but I do ask for, for her advice in marketing because, uh, yeah, and, and as we were talking about that, I came to the realization that, yes, I'm really bad at marketing and promoting, but that is not an excuse. And I was just thinking about that, uh, realizing how much more I could be doing, how much more I probably should be doing, even just the bare bones, social media, uh, consistent posting, which I'm really bad at, but I kind of just started realizing by, by saying that I'm really bad at that, uh, and, and continuing to just embody that identity that, you know, it's one of those self-limiting beliefs that I, that I have that, you know, it's kind of probably, I'm, I'm kind of just using that as a, as an excuse because it doesn't take a lot of, it doesn't take a lot of brain power or time to post a reminder about a show or an album or anything on social media. It's pretty darn easy. Uh, so yeah there's really no excuse for that and i should instead start doing more with that yeah i started feeling guilty about the shows i've been a part of that i have not promoted as heavily as i probably should have i never did nothing i always made sure the information was available if somebody went to the facebook and sought it out or went to whatever but that was kind of where I stopped, it was just like, I would just make the information available. And that's kind of the way I was releasing my albums, always. I kind of just make them available, but I don't really push them that much. Um, yeah, there's just a, there's something about promotion that I, I need to figure out a way to do it in a way that, that feels good and not bad. I, I've, I really don't like the way it feels to try and sell somebody something. I mean, even if it is music that I've made or a show that we're playing, like I really don't like that that feeling. So if I could find a way to do it in a way that felt better, that would be good. Kind of just, I'm letting you know, but I'm not forcing you to, like force feeding you this stuff but I, I mean apparently that's what you have to do um, and I could understand because you know social media moves at such a fast pace I mean if you're if you're just trying to show up on people's feeds news feeds yeah you'd have to post a lot where my mindset before was I will make one post about a show and pin it to the top of my Facebook page. I'm like, there it is. Everyone can see it now. But, uh, yeah, I'm very, uh, very not good at that. But like I said, that's not a, not a good mindset to just accept that, I guess. So I'll, I'm going to try harder, harder with this show, harder with in the future. Anyway, on that note, the next Chalk Dinosaur show is on March 26th. It's Thursday. It's going to be, you know, we're going to be fresh into spring. And 
We're playing at the Thunderbird. Beautiful venue. Beautiful. And we're going to be playing with uh, Chachuba, who is kind of like a show trade. We played in Chicago with them. It was a beautiful show. It was really beautiful. And then uh, they're going to play with us in Pittsburgh. And I would describe their sound as live dance music performed by a trio. And I haven't seen anyone do it quite like they do. So um, come and check it out if you're interested. It's going to be a beautiful night. Beautiful. Um, you know what? I, if you're watching the video, you'll see I got these. I just got these salt lamps. And I'll tell you what. They are beautiful. They are just beautiful. Honestly, they are really great because they give off a light similar to like a candle or a fire. And when it's dark and I don't have any light coming in from the window, I got salt lamps around the room. It's nice. I like it. It makes me want to be in this room. You know what they say? A penny spent is a penny out of your pocket that... And then your pants are less heavy, and then you don't need a belt. So you saved a lot of pennies. So, without further ado, here's my conversation with Katie. Okay, let me do a little introduction here. Okay, am I looking at the camera ever? Uh, no. No. No, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can look wherever you want. Okay, cool. cool. Um, yeah. Altman's? Altman's? Yeah, Altman's. Okay. All right. These are always weird for me. <laughs> so Intros are my least favorite thing ever. Yeah, because I just have to go from talking in a normal conversation to being... I know. This is the show! I know. I know. But you're probably good at that because of your... I don't, your I don't do intros. Okay. What I, I don't know if I did this with you when you were on Scene Unheard, but I'll just start... It's kind of shady, but I'll just start recording. Okay. And I don't tell them. Yeah. We're see, getting good content, you know? Yeah, that's nice. And then at some point, just be like, oh, yeah. It's like somebody compared it, and this is very high praise, to an SNL cold open. They're like, that's what your podcast reminds me of. And <laughs> right, then, like, just in the middle. <laughs> I don't know where I'm like, by the way, this is Seen Unheard episode three, whatever. Yeah. I, I like it. It's weird and different. Yeah, that's good. It's a little, that's a little easier. Um, easier to kind of, yeah, I think I did that the last, the last thing I did, last podcast. Um. But, okay. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, this is March 10th, 2020. It's episode 16 of the Chalk Dinosaur Podcast. And today, uh, we have Katie Altmans, who works at um, in the radio business mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, has a podcast, a uh, music podcast, and, which is how uh, I met her. And can I say what your other... Of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can say what else I do. That's okay. <laughs> Marketing director at uh, uh, Thunderbird and, and Roxian. Roxian Theater. Roxian Theater. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, most of the guests that I talk to are... Very, or you know, musicians in yeah. in that side, but you're very kind of life kind of revolves around music, but mm -hmm. in in a different way, right? Yeah. So um, maybe maybe let's start with the radio, okay? And uh, maybe maybe describe like what you do there right now, and sure. maybe maybe like eventually I want to know, you know, what the progression was that. Yeah, no, I'd love to talk about it. Um, so right now, I am the midday host on Big 1047, which is the iHeart Country station in town. It's uh, midday is 10 to 3 p.m. Uh, I do weekends and fill-ins on 105.9 The X. Um, I host Edge of the X, which is very near and dear to me. It's every Sunday night, um, 7 to 11. We play a lot of newer alternative singles, uh, newer active rock, and 16 local bands every Sunday night. So I get a real kick out of it. Um, and it's also a really fun place to concentrate and plug the local shows that are happening that weekend. A lot of shows happen on Sunday nights, uh, so hmm. it, it's kind of fun to talk about it and hype it up. Um, 
I also am broadcasted outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm on the air in Philadelphia, San Diego, Charlotte, and Indianapolis. Whoa. Oh, cool. So like, all right. So when you're doing a a show, like, um, is that for certain specific like slots that you are on or that get broadcasted? Yeah. 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 Um, it's it's different for each for each market, right. but home so like base, the edge of the X would be that's just for the X. Just for that's the very X. specific yeah. to the X. Yeah, yeah. Pittsburgh's home base for me. Yeah. So how many how many radio stations does iHeart run or something? Because I I have in no Pittsburgh? idea how that works. In or in general. I guess I guess let's start with Pittsburgh. So I don't even know in general. I have no yeah. idea how many markets we, or how many stations we have in the country. It's very Googleable. It seems very Googleable, yeah. but I don't know. Um, in Pittsburgh, we have six. Oh, yeah. Whoa. We're all in uh, the DVE building in in Green Tree, that big gold cube. Yeah, that's us. That yeah. was that's a cool building. It is a cool building. Glad it I actually, got to see it. when I was growing up, it was my least favorite building in town. I was like, <laughs> what an eyesore. Worst. I hated it, and now I spend seven days a week there. I've always been curious about that building, so. Cool. I'm curious about the people in the building. They're, they're, is it, we're an interesting lot. I'll say that for sure. Is it a big, is it like a big staff there? Uh, relatively. We have a sales floor uh, programming, which we I call arts and crafts, which is all the on-air um, staff and promotions. Um, we have we have three floors in the building. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly hang out with... Uh, with the on-air kids and uh, and promotions, you know, we just kind of it feels like we're just messing around, but yeah. it's it's work somehow. So, okay, so like, what does um, what is your day like at work? Um, is it all on like on-air stuff, or are you doing other stuff? You're kind of trying to balance being on the air. It's a lot of running around. Uh, if you don't have any meetings, you're able to just kind of like isolate yourself in your studio and uh, get a lot done, which is great, ideal. Um, but that's not always the case. A lot of us have to be in meetings, like music meetings or uh, just station meetings. We have an X meeting once a week. Shocked we get anything done with that group of people, but... Um, just meaning that we just, we're just like telling jokes the whole time. It's kind of like, it's just like the, the mouthy angsty kids in high school that are just like showing off in the back of the class. Those are X meetings. That's how I (laughs) would equate. They're really fun, but, um, things pop up in the middle of the day that you have to take care of, you know, put out fires. Um, so in that sense, you kind of have to try to like factor in time to work ahead a little bit um and be be ahead of the game a little bit but yeah it's it's just it's just a lot of being doing your show sometimes people will like take tours yeah and you feel really strange because it's like you're in like a fish tank and people are just looking at you (laughs) like look yeah look (laughs) i've uh i could imagine that yeah um so like how long is the show depends um you know mid days is five hours tip typically they're anywhere from wow five hours four to six hours yeah whoa yep wow so how do you um yeah how does like the how does that time work out in terms of like um what you play and like yeah the i don't know just like how six hours would work i mean i don't even really think about it anymore um it just it like it's just the nature of of the job that's which what it is um it's not always entirely up to us what we get to play um mm-hmm. which is why edge of the x is so fun for okay. me because yeah. you know we can throw in 16 d- different bands every week um and, you know, no one can tell us that we can't. Um, it's just our own yeah. local programming. It's really special. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, we don't always get to, to, to decide what we play, but we certainly take requests. And it's really fun to interact with people on the phone and take calls. And I know a really big thing uh, to do 
in in radio is do like trivia Mm -hmm. just to get people engaged and uh, have something to look forward to every day it's like unique to your show um so it's not i mean i don't have any co-hosts so it's just kind of me hanging out um but with like with like a morning show that's a full camp of people you know just making jokes at 6 a.m and they always eat like three course meals like they always have food delivered for the morning shows that are like ribs i'm like how are you (laughs) how are you having mashed potatoes at seven o'clock in the morning but i guess because their bodies just adapt and adjust to that lifestyle that they're starving at 5 45 i don't know so you have a show at at night right or you you go my show's during the day um but i have a lot to do outside of my pittsburgh gig so i'm i'm there at least twice a day uh or i should say at least once a day rather um but seven days a week it's been like that since i started yeah when was that when did i start Mm -hmm. on the air or in the building because i wasn't i guess i guess in the building and then yeah um i started in the building june 2016 it was the first um job in entertainment that i found out of college it was a part-time promotions gig promotions and radio it's like if you've ever driven past uh, like a big arena show or been to a pavilion show and you see a radio tent with people in t-shirts that are um like dying of heat exhaustion that's (laughs) that's radio promotions um i did that for a year um and I, I suppose I should I should tell you how I I, I I really didn't enjoy it for a long time and it's it is grunt work but it was I just had a bad attitude about it like the promotion stuff yeah I didn't want to be in Pittsburgh like I, I went to Cleveland for a school and I thought I wanted to work in film so uh, it's you know just have to find a full-time job so I, I took a freelancing gig just writing and um, took this part-time promotions job back home at iHeartRadio. Um, and I didn't want to be in Pittsburgh, and that was a huge um, influence as to why my attitude was the way that it was. I just didn't really want to get to know anybody at the station. I had no interest in really dedicating myself to it. Um, yeah, it was kind of just a temporary it was thing. Just like a, it was just like a, it was just a job. Um, and that's, that's fine. Um, but I actually just uh, told somebody else's story yesterday. I um, was randomly pulled on to work a meet and greet uh, at Stage AE. And uh, my boss was like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, so-and-so called off. I need you to work the meet and greet. You're going to meet with the record rep and, uh, you know, just, like, man the fort for us. I was like, all right, cool. Um, so I did. And um, I was kind of having a good time. kind of took me by surprise. And I hit it off with this record rep and I just, you know, we got to talking and I was like, you got to tell me how you got started. It's a cliche question, but like what you do sounds like everything I've always imagined, but couldn't really put, like, I didn't know that there was a, a name for it. Yeah. She was like, why well, I was hard to doing what you're doing. She's like, I met my husband, the concert photographer. He was in radio promotions. Like, that's a pretty common place to start. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Um, it just kind of clicked that if I adjusted my attitude, I could really turn this into something and working in radio really can open so many doors, no matter what you want to do in the music industry. The radio industry is very separate from the music industry, but the two coincide all the time. Yeah. Um, that's what this was. Is that what this was at stage? It was, you said you were meeting with an artist rep with, yes. So I would, this is the artist's radio rep for the label okay so this is the person that tries to kind of like sell the singles to the station to get airplay right. mm-hmm. um and yeah i i just took that and ran with it and i just decided that i was gonna do everything i could to try to get to where she was and i walked into my promotions director's office the very next day and just said i want to be on every meet and greet that has a record rep i want to meet everyone that we work with and we have the best promotions directors around. I feel forever indebted to them. They did. I worked every, at every level, a show that had uh, a record rep on on the show, and 
worked a lot of meet and greets, met a lot of artists. Um, and then I began to love it because it felt like I was working towards something. Yeah, and you kind of saw some yeah, of a, a path or a... I got to know everybody and was like, damn it, I love these people. Like, at, at first, my attitude was so bad. And I was like, I don't care. I don't want to know any of your personal lives. Now I'm like super invested in their personal lives. And they're all really good friends of mine. And um, I just made it, not for any ulterior motive, but I just made it... Um, a goal of mine to to make sure everybody knew who I was. Mm-hmm. I would just go and people sit in people's offices and studios. Yeah, totally uninvited and just <laughs> try to hang and just get try to, to get to know people. Yeah, yeah. and it, again, it wasn't for any sort of like career move, but I just wanted to be there. I was there all the time. I was hanging out way too late at night. Like no reason to be there. Um, a bunch of us were. The, a lot of us in promotions. We just we just had the best time. I got really lucky that way and um it was in april 2017 um i guess people noticed that i really wanted to be there and i got called into a program director's office for big 1047 he was just totally offhand like middle of the day he was like we need some more female talent and we would love if you would give this a try Wow. So I went out and bought $10 headphones that day at Best Buy, and I, I have been on the air ever since. Wow. So, like, how, do you, how did you know what to do? I honestly <laughs> didn't. I, I had never thought that being on air was like a – it had never occurred to me. Yeah. Ever. Did you have any, like – did you, like, shadow someone or, like, you know, like, to know how to – all the buttons to push and stuff. No, nope. I had <laughs> one. I I had one crash course, and from then on, I just like lived there, and I was just like, I have to figure this out. Like, I have to figure out what these things do. If I had any questions, people were there for me. Yeah. But once I started, uh, the amount of support. Like I just, and I try to pay it forward with people that are up and coming on the air now. These people had no reason to help me. Like they were very busy people, a lot going on. And they just told me everything that they knew. And I am, I don't know if that happens in other cities. I'm sure it does. But all I know is what happens here and people like randy slack who is the former dve morning show producer people like randy bauman people like stacy walter people like abby on the x tall kathy uh everybody in that building it it feels like everybody was like let me help you and show you like tell you what not to do don't make the mistakes i did people would listen to me on the air without even me telling them that I was going to be on the air that night. They'd be like, okay, it's uh, it's 1 a.m. Don't say good morning. It's still the night. Like little things like yeah. that, that I just, you know, I was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. And um, they're, they're the ones that kind of told me to make a demo for the X because at that point I was just on big and they were like, do you like country? I was like, I mean, it's okay. Like I definitely had to study it because it doesn't come as naturally to me as right. rock music does. Um, and Stacy gave me a, a really good tip that uh, holiday weekends a lot of on-air staff call off, and um, you know there's a need to like fill oh. those spots. She was like, "You should submit your demo then because yeah. then he'll be like, oh, I could use you in, in the <laughs> right. future." And I did, and I got weekends on the X that fall. 2017. Mm-hmm. Okay, wow. So, like, a year after you started with the promotions. Yeah. That's cool. It's wild. Did you get to know, um, like, those on-air people that you said you met that were very helpful? Mm-hmm. Um, did you get to know them when you were not on-air yet, when you were doing, still in the promotions kind of That's the thing. Side? Like, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to know... It just depended on who you worked with. Um, yeah. I got to know... JD Green, who is the, he's on the air for big and he's also my program director. And, um, he's the one that said, I think we should give you, you know, I would love to give you a shot. Um, but it wasn't until I started to be on the air and people 
got to know me that way, that I really became uh, more familiar with these people that are now such a big part of my life. And um, especially like, I, I really have to, to shout the women in that building. Everybody from my promotions director, her name is Rachel for Big 1047, uh, Stacy on the X, Abby on the X, Tall Kathy, you know, Michelle Michaels, Val Porter on DVE, Sherry on 3WS, they're all just really supportive. And um, I have I have leaned on them a lot just for camaraderie, for advice, for support, and they've always yeah. been there. It's ridiculous. That's great to hear. That That's not um, like a cutthroat type of thing. It, um, it's a strange industry because technically I'm competing with all these people in the building. Right. But the way we look at it, the way I look at it, is that if something really great happens for Travis, who is on Big 1047, if something really great happens for Abby, that's a win for us because that's part of our team. Yeah. So a win for anyone, I think, is just a win for the whole building. I think the same applies for the for the music community here, too. Yeah, I would think so, yeah. Yeah. Right, any kind of... Yeah, I never really felt competitive. I guess the only competitive part is, like, inadvertent competition whenever there are two shows happening at the same time. And that's the war... I know, that and happens not like all a, the time. Right, but that's, like, not a... That's like doesn't feel the same as like no. um, somebody trying to like stomp you out. Come for your spot. Yeah. No. It's just people have to pick between their f- two friends shows. And yeah. It's a tough spot. Right. So maybe this would be. Well, let me think about it. If I have any <laughs> more questions. Okay. About the radio. Yeah. Because okay, you mentioned three WS. That's an iHeart. Oh yeah. Station three dub. Three dub. <laughs> I don't think anybody else calls it. One of my favorites. <laughs> really? Probably, yeah. Nice. My brother is a big Three WS listener. Um, Can I ask who who you listen to the most? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Ha- I'm not like a regular radio listener. That's okay. Because I'm not in the car very often. You know, so. I could do a real plug right now for the IR Radio app. I won't. <laughs> I could. <laughs> So you can listen to the radio anywhere. I, I, <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but I'm not going down. I say that enough on the air. I'm not going to do that on your podcast. I mean, sometimes I want to listen to the radio and I'm like, how do I even listen to the radio anymore? Because radios like don't exist in home stereos. Radios are on smart speakers. Uh, you could say, well, I hate that I'm plugging this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alexa, play 105.9 The X. They will. She okay. will. Through the iHeartRadio app. Yeah. It's pretty wild. I guess it gets <laughs> it gets weird with sports because there's weird um like blockages of yeah. broadcasts, which I don't I don't understand. But I just know that sometimes that can be can be weird. What else? Okay, so th- that's three then. Are there any other like FM stations in Pittsburgh? You said there's six? iHearts, yeah. So we got D V E. Uh, 105.90X, 96.1 Kiss. Oh my God! Big 104.7, <laughs> 3WS, and ESPN Pittsburgh. Wow, that's pretty. That's wow, my fam. That's, that's that's a huge fam. I know. That's it's a cool, weird right? fam too. <laughs> lot lot of personalities in that family. Yeah, I had no idea those were all in the same building. Oh yeah, kind of like under the same. People you know, the don't same really people. know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like TV morning shows right downstairs. The X is around the corner kiss downstairs yeah wow so do you ever fill in on any of those other stations that you don't normally Mm-mm. huh yeah <laughs> let's move on to your cool. podcast i would love to because that's what we're doing right now yeah so why don't you talk about uh yeah how that started okay. and like what what kind of made you decide to do that Mm -hmm. um it's actually very um serendipitous that we're talking about this now um the anniversary um of the album release party that made me want to start it was just a few days ago it was paul luke's bad seed album release party 
Um, so I guess also, this is 2018, right before uh, Deutsche Town. I, you know, podcasts are huge now, and it's encouraged to try to, you know, to to talk, to think of some ideas to have podcasts, just to have another project going, and I really wanted to do one, um, but I was like, I don't know what I could talk about on a weekly basis that people would care about. Like, I could talk yeah. about, like, my favorite band once a week, or, like food once a week but how do i make that cool like i've i never done a podcast i don't mm-hmm. really listen to a lot of them to be honest um so i was like i don't I, I feel lost and again randy slack coming in really clutch you know he booked a lot of bands for dve coffee house and i was like dude i'm not going to ask you to do this for me but i'm going to ask you what i'm supposed to do because i don't i think i want to talk about local music mm-hmm because this, this, uh, I had this experience at Paul Luke's release party. Uh, I, you know, was pretty fresh to being a full time radio host, and I, um, I never really invited my friends outside of the station to shows. They really only went to like you know, big production, right. like, mainstream shows. And I was like, I would love for you to come see what I do when I'm not hanging out with you. So I, I brought them to, to Paul Luke shows at Mr. Smalls. Uh, I also knew that they would really dig his sound. And great album, great show. And they were just swaying, bobbing their heads to every song. And they went home and downloaded the whole record. And I was like, what if I could do that, but for more than just two people? So that was just kind of in the back of my mind, and that's why I decided to start the podcast. And Randy Slack was like, all right, who do you know? I said, I kind of know Nathan Zoop. Yeah. That's about it. I follow him on Twitter. And he was like, okay, go with that. Um, I'll give you Hugh Twyman's email. Deutschtown's coming up. It was in like a week. He was like, you should have Hugh on and talk to Randy and then – It'll go from there. And I was yeah. like, dude, Deutsche Town's in a week, though. And he was like, yeah, I guess you're doing this podcast next week, then. And I was <laughs> like, okay. So I DM'd Zoo in the most unprofessional way, like 1130 on a Sunday night. And I was like, hey, um, I think I have a podcast now. I'd love to have Recluse on. And they were lovely about it. And he was like, yeah, for sure. would love to. Emailed Hugh. And he was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm coming into the building to talk Deutsch Town. You want to do it then? And I was like, oh, my God, I have to do this in three <laughs> days. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, it definitely taught me how to get used to preparing for last-minute episodes, and yeah, which came in handy many a time. Um, and Hugh and his Hugh ways. We had a great interview, and he was like, excellent. You're going to interview Recluse, so then you'll stage announce that day at Deutsch Town. I was like, oh, uh- <laughs> <laughs> oh Sure. Um, I have massive stage fright, so I was very... Oh, wow. Yeah, it Did was some, great. Some MCing. It was a big day for me. My first, like, band recording of a podcast. I was sweating bullets, and I had a stage announced before that, but <laughs> it was a really fun time, and um, it was a very interesting first interview of the podcast in a very noisy parking lot in Allegheny Park next so to the hospital. So it was like a mobile type of The whole setup. first season was mobile. I, um, for some reason, thought that nobody would want to talk about their music for Uh free. I was like, no one's going to want to do this. Um, And I would pretty much, not that I was begging people, but I was like, I just, oh, please, I would really love if you would come on the podcast. I'll come to you. I'll bring the mic. You have to pass it around. Sounds very familiar. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) I feel like, yeah. I I just had a Zoom mic that picked up just all the background noise in the world. So I'm at these shows and Starship Mantis is like at, you know, full volume in the back. <laughs> I'm like, so what's your, how'd you get started? <laughs> uh, quality is not great on season one, um, but the people were really great. Um, people that I still, you know, go to see live, communicate with all the time. And I just decided, I didn't really know what I was going to do after I had, you know, so many episodes and just from kind of borrowing and stealing from other podcasts that I'd seen just on different platforms, I was like, maybe I'll break it up into seasons and like do it differently a little, like, you yeah. know, each time. Yeah, I was curious about that. So 
it just kind of breaks it up for me and also for my audience, I think, to kind of, it, it helps for booking to be like, you know what, I do 13 a season. Yeah. So you're not going to, it's not going to fit in this one. I'm going to put, I'll, I'll put you in the next season. Um, I, it was very important to me to have a no turn away policy. Um, I think we do a lot at the radio station. Um, I think a lot of radio stations in town, not just iHeart stations, do a lot for the local music community, especially YEP. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a lot of uh, guitar-based sounds, a lot of rock. That's just the nature of what you know what our stations are. Yeah, the X and DVE. That you know, we can only be so flexible with. Right. And I think we are pretty flexible with the kind of like subgenres that we have on. Um, but I, there's so much more out there than just rock and grunge and punk and alternative bands. So I was like, I, I know there's more out there. I've seen local DJs open for like Chami. I've, I know that there's people out there like, you know, I know that there's pop artists. I know there's country artists. I just need to know who they, I just need to find them. So I made it all genre inclusive. I, I, yeah. I made sure that I advertised that. Um, to the best of my ability in the beginning um, and that if somebody was a local musician in Pittsburgh and they wanted to come on they were going to come on at some point right Um, that was really important to me to separate myself from other local music podcasts um, that do say no um, and that only seek people out that don't take requests Um, do you yeah what are some other do you know any other ones that I don't know of any other ones. I do. Uh, Soundcheck PGH is a big one. Oh, I haven't. I haven't listened to that. Yeah, one. it's a cool podcast. Yeah, um, they they play. Um, I really like. They play um, clips all throughout the episode of the artist's music. That's a really cool way to do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Really cool. I just do the intro. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, but yeah, I. Um, I didn't really know. I, I know you were in season two, I believe. Yeah. And that's when I decided, like, I have all this equipment right at my fingertips. Why don't I just bring people in here? And yeah. I then it dawned on me, like, that's actually probably better because there's going to be a lot of artists that have never set foot in here before. Might not set foot in here ever again. Yeah. Um, but I wanted... You know, not that I'm patting myself on the back, but I wanted them to have that experience. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a cool. Yeah, that's definitely a novel experience. Like I'd never yeah. been in that building. I was always curious what was on what was going on in there. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of, you know, have my arms open to all the rap artists that we have in Pittsburgh, all the hip hop, the R&B, the electronic, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, the pop artists the indie artists that don't get airplay all the time yeah yeah it's cool i i feel like your podcast started out i was like oh i know that person i know that person i know that person and then like that now it's like all people that you know i I'm, I'm, was unaware of that's which is cool. awesome yeah that's what i wanted um i figured that i would you know it would kind of go that way um my favorite thing is the fact that i just you know, at first it was all me reaching out to people Mm -hmm. and now it's, it's pretty much all request based. Oh, nice. Which I never thought would happen. Um, So the word is out. The word is out (laughs) and I'm, I'm I'm booked through May, which is cool. Is this for all for season five? It is. I made it a long season five because I didn't know where to, I, I messed up when drawing the line. So it's a, it's a doozy of a season, but, um, there will be a season six. I just, um, yeah. I think I think that the time is is now to cut off. Right. Request. How many uh, how many episodes are you doing for this one? Yeah, this is probably going to be closer to like seventeen. So that'll be the longest longest one for sure. Yeah, the seasons are are good. How how many episodes in did you switch over to the studio from the field recorder or like on location? style i think i had 12 or 13 episodes in the first season my last episode was with cindy house from yeah. formerly from wyp um it was right before the holiday and i was like this is a cool just time to wrap it up um 
I, I, you know, it gets really crazy around the holidays, just work wise. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, I just, I don't want to be having to prep for the podcast right now. I just want to take time, get all my work sorted, be with my family. Um, And that's when I was like, maybe I won't just take a break. Maybe I'll just call that a season one finale. Yeah. That's nice. I like the, the chunks. The chunks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it it certainly helps me break it up with booking. But it seems like whenever you're in the midst of a of a chunk, they it seems like they're released very pretty often. Like yeah, very frequently. Every Saturday. Yeah. That's hard. I I am very erratic with, with uh with mine. <laughs> it is hard. I have found though that that's what it's what helps numbers. Uh if just it's, consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If Something. you're a numbers guy, it's good to not be a numbers person. Not not yet with this because it's okay. It's uh, it's quite a uh, young. But um, yeah, no need to worry about all that yet. Definitely with music, trying to be. Uh, it definitely I've noticed that helps a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's something, anything to consume. As a listener, a, a video to watch or something, mm-hmm. they definitely build. But yeah, that's that's the hard part. It is hard. Um, you know, it's not always the same time uh, on Saturdays. It just depends on, you know, because I have to be on the air Saturday morning. So it's kind of, but everyone's cool about it. And no one really cares about time specificity. They're just like, yeah, cool. They're yeah. just surprised that it's out in a week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you said you were really nervous before your first one. Oh my god, yeah. Like, um, how did you prepare for that one? So, um, luckily I was familiar with Rec Lewis's music. Um, but what I do before every recording, and now they're, they're booked so far in advance, that's really helpful. I listen to the full discography if I can. Um, I will read every article that's posted about the band. Oh, wow. It's it's a lot of prep. Yeah. Um, and I found that half the time, like, I don't even use most of it because we end up talking about, like, <laughs> bears or something. Like, yeah, it just goes, it go- and right. I, I let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, if they want to bring something up, um, I will follow their lead. Um, yeah. It's, um, yeah, the first one, I, I had no real interview experience i had done a few phoners with some uh you know national artists but that's nothing close to what a podcast is yeah um i feel like i'm still learning how to do it right i don't know if you feel that way but it's cause yeah i wanted to see what your experience was with like well every guest is different everyone's yeah. comfort level is different um especially when i i bring them into a, a place like an iheart radio station i was a little ignorant at first to how much signage we have and how perhaps intimidating yeah that place could i guess be. yeah it could be that way yeah with the with the studio anytime yeah. you're going into like a professional building is i i try to make people as comfortable as i can um you know i, I try to give everyone a rundown of who i am what i do um I try to provide room temp water as often as I can. <laughs> room temp, room temp, room temp. Um, that's all I have to offer. <laughs> um, I, and I, I really try to. It's it's supposed to be a safe space, so I, I try to show them yeah. that before we start recording, just that they're comfortable. Yeah. Um, I think I was pretty comfortable. Awesome. I'm glad. Um, but yeah, sweating bullets the first time. I was. I didn't know. I didn't really know recluse as people. I mm-hmm. was like, what if they're awful people like (laughs) what if they're the worst yeah couldn't be further from the truth but i didn't know and um you know it it was really intimidating um i was looking at them every artist really as these are people who are figuring or have already figured out what goes into something like this and i was the novice and i I I was looking at it wrong in that regard, and that's not even a conversation. Like, you know, we're just here to help out each other. Um, and I didn't really start to see that until I would meet more bands, and everybody was just so 
kind and grateful and down to earth and the conversation, you know, when I saw that we didn't have to have like, okay, that's how you got started. How did you meet? Okay, cool. Like right. we didn't have to follow that. We could yeah. just let it be a conversation. That's when I discovered that this could be something else entirely. Yeah, definitely. So do you usually have, yeah, cause ideally, yeah, it'll usually starts out for me. I'm pretty kind of, I guess, nervous, I guess, mm -hmm. once it starts and, and awkward and like starting it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, usually at a certain point, that kind of goes away. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if, mm -hmm. if it can like turn into just a regular conversation. I love when they say, can we tell you a story? I'm yeah. like, you take as much airtime as you want. <laughs> That's perfect for this yeah. platform. Um, if I can tell someone is nervous, I'll try to, to, to say at the beginning, like, hey, the longer the story, the better, like, you know, the more embellished a response, the better. Like, I want you to tell me everything. I want to get those those bits of information that you didn't tell yeah. the other, you know, media outlets. Like, I, not that I'm looking for dirt, but like, detail. you know, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, that's a lot of prep that you do for an episode. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you generally like write down like a bullet list or something or yep. like some kind of... For sure. Um, I definitely couldn't go off book um i like to you know to, uh, like i said before if it goes off the rails i usually have a lot more fun and that's great uh if we don't get to everything that's okay um but yeah i i keep some bullet points of things that i definitely want to talk about like particular album releases or right. stories that they mentioned in other media outlets which i give credit to um and if there's like a particular song um, or, you know, EP, um, that is of great interest to me or that I really enjoyed or that they just put out. I'll definitely yeah. want to talk about that. And your releases are always something I try to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. I've been finding that most of the time things go off the rails. It's great. As, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I, I find after every, almost every one, I, as soon as it's over um, and I'm like, uh, you know, editing it or putting it together mm -hmm. or something, I'm like thinking of all these things that I forgot to ask that I wanted to know or, all the time. or um, just complete areas that I, we kind of just glaze over that I'm later like, you know, could have talked a little more about that. But yeah, I mean, I like, yeah. I like kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> it's also like, I don't know if, if you've encountered this yet, but like I, I say this all the time. I love, and it's become a very uh, frequent occurrence when I get to meet someone for the first time on the podcast. Because then I just get to ask you. I feel like I'm genuinely just trying to get to know you. Yeah. On Instead of just like a, a little bit more forced way of getting to know someone. Yeah. Like, a, like, you know. I already knew... Uh, zoob sort of mm -hmm. um and it's it just is i love having anybody on at all just the fact that people want to do this is incredible um and i love when people come back on like i actually just had zoob on again and it was so fun because now we're like legitimate friends and then it really spirals we were doing like food analogies for songwriting and it was just oh i heard that episode train wreck <laughs> yeah train wreck um but it's so it was so fun and um like, but like forget what he said was the table oh I god i don't know <laughs> i don't know I, was, I remember listening that i'm like my analogy was different but yeah i, can't I don't remember i don't blame you um no i just had an absolute blast and um getting to know people like uh i got to know claire kent for the first time i got to know i got to really meet and talk to Sierra Sellers for the first time on my podcast. Um, same with Brittany Chantel. I met Benji for the first time. Um, I think that my episode with you was the first time really getting to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I think so. Yeah. There's yeah. just some email coordinating. Yeah. Uh, the living street, same for them. They're buddies of mine now. Um, you must have, I mean, when you have a podcast conversation like that, yeah. you, I feel like, you're really getting a lot more information about that 
that person then kind For of sure. anything, any other way that you could, other than, you know, like actually being friends with them. Right. Like you must have gotten to know so many people in, in Pittsburgh now. Genuinely. And I feel kind of like a proud, like cousin or something to like all these different people because uh, for feral cats a really good example um Mm -hmm. we talked about his debut release about a month or two on the podcast before it came out he had a joint release party with starship mantis uh june of last year and we talked about it thoroughly and then i went to the release show and it he just sounded phenomenal. I really respect what he's doing. I think he's an incredible musician Mm -hmm. and to hear him, you know, on this really momentous night, be on stage supported by all these people at Mr. Smalls and talking about stories that he told me on my podcast way back when I was like tearing up. I just feel yeah. like I'm genuinely like I, it's like I've talked, I've had like one very meaningful conversation and I feel like I, right. I'm just so proud yeah. to know these people and I can't kind of just involved. Yeah. And in I do feel really involved yeah. and I'm also very grateful. People have told me a lot of really personal things on the podcast and I just really am grateful that they trust me with that on my platform. Yeah. That, that they feel, uh, welcomed enough to talk about things like sexism or racism or abuse uh any sort of hardship i just am very grateful and try to be as respectful as i can that that's not easy to bring up with someone that you don't know on a microphone that's hot you know right yeah that's that's really cool i i feel a similar sense whenever I, I, whenever I see other bands, like I, I feel like I get the same sense from bands that I might have played with before, like yeah, I'm friends with or mm-hmm. something, um, or not friends with, just like have played with before, like yeah. associated with somehow, um, yeah. Just to, I, I feel like I can understand that that feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel like um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, connected you do feel connected yeah you feel like you're a part of their story <clears throat> so have you ever thought about as so there's no it sounds like there's no shortage of people i could talk to yeah i could technically do this like forever you know what i mean yeah like when when do you make that call i think about this all the time like when i'm going to stop yeah i have no idea (laughs) right or yeah or you could yeah have you ever thought about like expanding to artists that may be traveling to pittsburgh on a tour as well i have but i already kind of do that at the radio station um oh okay and this is yeah it's if it's if it's if it's applicable to the radio station right if it's a show that we're going to be involved in yeah, they'll typically do, like, radio phoners, um, and they'll turn out, like, you know, 10 per, per sitting. Like, I'll oh, wow. have, yeah, like, a, um, I had Bert Kreischer. Um, he's a comedian. I had him, uh, he did, like, he called into the X last fall to promote a show he was doing at um, the New Music Hall in Oakland. And I know that he was calling... You know, probably a station in, like, I don't know, like, Rhode Island for 15 minutes. Then he'd call the X. Then he'd call a station in yeah. New Hampshire. And just they'd just do that for, like, an hour. And um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll partake in, in that. Um, or if we're at a show and I get to do an interview, yeah, 100%. I try to jump at every interview opportunity that I can because I want to get better at it. Um, but I don't know. I... I've expanded it to people outside of the music industry. I had a, I had a, um, a clothing, I had a clothing painter on. Stu Frick came on. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, I'm also having another, I won't say who, but someone who works in, um, well, they do a lot of modeling as well, but, um, someone who works in, in, um, sustainable 
fashion and i'm really that's actually this week i'm looking forward to recording with them cool yeah i i'm often curious about people who work in the music industry Mm -hmm. outside of the musicians themselves um yeah like radio or like people who are booking agents Mm -hmm. or people who do like artist management or oh, yeah. um, just like these kind of upper layer uh, positions that I'd, I'd have no like idea what they do or like yeah. how they interface with um, artists and stuff. Sure. I, like people who run venues and stuff. Mm-hmm. I I haven't gotten anybody like that yet. You're the first person that's, that's like that. Um, yeah. How we doing? Five twenty-five. How long? Could wrap it up. Wrap I guess. it up. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't think. Uh, I mean, did you have anything that you want to say? Anything you wanted to? Yeah. I feel like I hit a lot. Yeah. You know. Um, I'll tell you one thing about everyone who works in the music industry, and this can apply to any industry really. Everyone is breaking their back to make it happen. It's a very. It's very. Um, demanding yeah it's hard work it's a re- it's a really fun subject yeah but there's a lot that goes into you know seeing any of your favorite bands in pittsburgh any of your friends in pittsburgh a lot goes into it and it's done months hopefully <laughs> months in advance you know yeah yeah, it's definitely uh, takes a takes a lot takes a long time too. For sure, yeah. It takes a lot of people in in a lot of cases. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. So, do you have any advice mm. for marketing an event? Okay, because <sighs> we're playing. My band is playing an event, and. Mm-hmm. We're trying to f- think of ways to, I don't know, like, I was just curious if you had any thoughts on that sure. since you do that kind of stuff. So um, if you feel like most of your audience is online, big social media push. Like, you can't post enough about your show, you know? Yeah. Instagram story, Instagram grid. You could tweet about it, post it on Facebook. Grid. Oh, grid. Like a grid post. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's not a new platform. Don't worry. Nothing has happened in the last hour. 3D. Um, yeah. Uh, a big social media push, even like getting physical tickets to sell to your friends. Um, getting posters to hang up around town is big. Um, just telling anybody and everybody. Like, yeah. Word of mouth is huge. All that grassroots marketing is really big. Um it you know i certainly do it um making sure that i look at you know what posters are hanging up in the coffee shop while i'm waiting for my coffee or you know there's posters up in guitar stores all the time um it digital is huge but on the ground impressions are just as important yeah i think um especially promoting your own show um so I think it's important to kind of find where your audience is. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, social media is killer. You know? Right. That's probably where people get most of their stuff. Yeah. I, I would argue people our age, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess there's there's some print. There's, like, city paper. You could always reach out to, you know, influencers, media outlets, if they want to write about your show or if, you you know, if they'd consider uh, doing, like, a review or... yeah always an option yeah how do radio stations do that kind of stuff with with like promoting shows and stuff do they mm-hmm. do they ever do that on, on on like a local level yeah oh yeah i mean so there's many ways to do it you can certainly reach out to us and tell us that i mean like when you email i can only speak for my stations right yeah for the X, if you reach out to the X and say you have a show coming up, your email is being read and we're talking about it. Um, we 
do our very best to advocate for as many people as we can. Uh, Abby does a weekend in the Berg. Um, it's a piece of imaging. It's like a commercial that runs um, from like Thursday through Sunday about all the shows happening that weekend. You could submit to Michelle Michaels on DVE. She has a, okay. a very similar thing. Talk about shows coming up that weekend. Um, cool. Very simple. It's just you know, call the station or email us. Cool. Um, and we're, we're happy to talk about it. I also try during Edge of the X to, uh, to just check Instagram. Again, why I would do social media. I use Instagram a lot to look up shows to promote on the air. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's helpful. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think this is the end. So, thanks, great, Katie. Great movie. You're welcome. <laughs> this is the end. 